Here's the Adam Schaff Schaff 1921 upright grand again. Um, trying to get the keys out. Got the first key out by brute force. Kind of a learning experience since this went underwater. Brackish salt water and Katrina. Um, anyways, here's the first one that I took out. Probably not need not to say how I got it out of there. Kind of brute force. Um, these pins are supposed to be either probably glued or tapped in place. Anyway, since I got this first key out in the far right, which isn't used that much, kind of a sacrificial thing, if you want to be kind of crude, I was able to get in here and uh, get kind of a knife or something and pry up under here and work it back and forth over and over and over again so I can lift this up. So that's my scheme through kind of uh, brute force magnet, madness or just uh, learning experience to try to get these keys out of here to clean this thing up. This has been a very frustrating thing, but once you get one out of here, it looks like I can go through and get these out of here to do some cleanup. Now this is typical of wood that went underwater in Katrina. You can see some black on here. You can probably call that toxic mold, Martian dust, whatever you want to. All that stuff that looks like that, if you're paranoid, you can wear a mask when you do this. Uh, probably gloves. You kind of get black on you. It looks like, uh, almost looks like toner. But uh, anything is made out of real wood. I mean, this is really American, made in Chicago. Um, this is very, this is nice hardwoods or whatever they're made out of. They clean up really nice. You can just basically wipe this off if you want to use some type of water, cleaner, whatever. But anything that's made out of real wood um, is very robust, even though it went underwater. What will happen is glues and things can come undone, like this piece here is undone but you can just basically pretty much wipe off anything if it's particle board uh, it basically turns to like cornflakes um, anyways here are the probably should look up the technical terms for all these things this is the pin that the uh, keys move on that pin there is solid probably needs to be gone over completely with some um, scotch bright or something so it pivots really nice but once I get all these off I can go in here and clean out see there's a piece of marsh grass and things like that all that stuff just gets inside and what even the most bizarre thing is that when you take something apart that's been underwater you might find pieces of paper uh, from your neighbor's credit card bill uh, who knows what you find really strange things that floated up in your house from miles away um, just the piece fragments that went up in there but these keys see right now if I want to try to keep, take this key off it's not going to come so I'm going to have to probably get up underneath here and just slowly um, see if I can um, get that out of there what I did in this last one is I stuck a piece of music wire down in here and kind of moved all around this uh, where it should be free. It's a piece of felt in there and finally got it to pop off. But anything that went underwater like this, it's steel. It rusts, of course. When it rusts, the, vo the size increases, the volume increases, uh, and so it expands the bigger in diameter and then it gets stuck. Um, luckily it's just wood if it was steel on steel you've got a big problem on there but this is not as bad as I thought it's going to be um, anyway so my plan is here is to take these off going from right to left since I've got one off that basically allows me to get in here but the whole trick was is to try to get the first one off and I basically took a pair of vice grips through desperation because I couldn't get in the side here and finally 
twisted this guy off of here because um, I couldn't pry it. But now I've got enough room in here I can come in from the side and finally get in here and pry these off of here. Just gingerly get in here and just try to work it. I might try to put just a tank of uh, penetrin in there. I'm not sure how good that is for the wood. If I can work these back and forth without any force, or any, that's probably the method I'm going to use is to go in here and just slowly take them off and clean them up. But what's cool is they've got the numbers on here so it's pretty goober proof to uh, get these things off. And um, that's the way I'm going to try to clean this thing up. Anyways, this is the Adam Schaaf shaft upright from 1921. Sometimes they call us a grand um, because it was called a grand piano, even though it's technically not a grand. That's kind of a funny thing to look on the internet because horizontal piano is a grand. Uh, a very tall upright that sounded like a grand. They called it a grand in the 1920s. And uh, there actually is a patent from 1789 or something like that by a guy on an upright grand, so that's kind of funny. But anyways, this is the mechanism for the uh, that drives the player piano. It's like a six-cylinder motor. There's the keys. I've got these two out, that's why they won't drive. Got the LED flashlight here going. See, that one sticks. That's because it's got some crap in there. And it's probably not too good. Pianos going underneath salt water probably isn't the best a thing to do. But, um,. This piano is so old, it's what, 91 years old, so it's kind of fun to fool with. It's really well made. I mean, this thing is just like bizarre how well it's made. I mean, everything is so logical, and the way it's laid out is totally cool. And uh, I don't know if this is cast iron or what it is. Um, whatever it is, it held up really well during Katrina. The piano really didn't go anywhere. It just, the uh, water in this house went up to about here during the storm, and the DC level, AC level, we had splashes that went up even higher. So if you look over here on the wall, you see scratch marks over here. That's where the um, um, sofa and everything got beat up against the wall and scratch the hell out of it so you've got scratch marks that are up here very high and may wonder why I haven't gotten to this thing I've actually been taking this apart in stages when something like this goes underneath the water I couldn't even get this thing apart because what happens everything seizes up on it and then it gets to be where it swells up so you can run dehumidifiers in the room and slowly get it apart and then you got so many other projects uh, to do that you just get overwhelmed. It's it's very hard to describe where everything you own goes underneath the water, but um, here I am years later still fooling with this thing. Um, it'll be fun to try to take this thing apart. I've been studying some on the internet. It's a good way to learn about some of this stuff. If in doubt, I think you just sometimes got to try uh, non-destructively like here this rightmost key I figured that's the most sacrificial to try if I have to tear something up so there's the pins and these pins are supposed to be held in place I don't know if they're pressed in place glued or what method they used years ago or maybe they're just you know slightly tapped in place. They're supposed to stay in place, but none of these will pop up. If you sit here and try to pull any of these keys up, uh, they're not going to come. They're basically like they're welded in place. So at first, I thought maybe there was a magical pin in here or a little uh, retaining ring or something, and I, 
I said that just can't be. Uh, so I've been messing with these things for a long time. In fact, when this first went underwater in Katrina and sort of dried out, none of these hardly worked. I had to get in here and vacuum all this out over and over again, take a knife and get here between each one and try to put a pull vacuum to get more and more crap out. And then as you do that, you, more and more junk keeps on falling down in here. Here's some more junk. There's all sorts of mar marsh grass that just keeps on coming out of this thing. So, it's kind of amazing. Anyways, this is the part two showing the keys trying to get the uh, pin mechanism here out of each one of these keys. I think once I start to get more and more out they're going to get easier because I'll refine my technique but my intent is is to start here on the far right the keys that really aren't used much to uh, learn as I'm going here how to get these things out of here and uh, I'm not sure maybe probably can just buy these pins again or I'll just maybe use the old ones.